Drew and Homer Drew talking about the most famous shot in mid-major history. So, Coach, everybody knows about the Ole Miss game, but you guys have made the tournament the two years prior. You know, you guys lose to Arizona, and they they were loaded. Like, who, Jet Terry, uh, Miles Simon. You lose a close one the next year to who? Boston College. They had Scooney Penn, okay. really close game. I remember listening to that on the bus. I was, I was in second grade. I remember listening to the game on the bus. And how, what was the final score of the Boston College game? Was it two, three? No, oh, you remember Bryce at all? It was very. Yeah, we I lost say, um, three. Was we went three? up like eleven zero. We we led for the first thirty two minutes of the game. Right. I remember. And then I think they won the Big East tournament championship that year. They they or they, they gradually took the lead, and then ended up being like six, I think. But first thirty two minutes, we were in control. So, coach, how did how did those two games kind of prepare you guys for for what happened in nineteen ninety eight? experience because of having gone through the three tournaments uh, uh, together. Uh, and I think after we lost to Boston College, and like Bryce was saying, we led most of the game and felt like we had chances to win it and then lost it, I think, by three, but I'm not sure you'll have to check that. So that summer, you could really see a difference. All the players, starting with Bryce and then Bill and Bob Jenkins, and they got into the weight room. They put extra time and shooting and into the gym. And you could see that they had a commitment, a purpose, a goal. And that goal was to win in the NCAA tournament. And so that summer set the good foundation for what we see in getting to the sweet 16. So Bryce in the Ole Miss game, you guys get like really good shots down the stretch. Like Zoran Viskovich gets a, a layup block by Ansu Cisse. I want to say Jamie Sykes has a three that he's wide open on with like 50 seconds to go. You get a wide open shot with seven seconds and none of them go. Like at any point or at, at that point, did you feel like maybe it just wasn't going to happen or was there doubt? You know, you follow Ansu Cisse as the SEC player of the year and he's going to the line to shoot two free throws. I guess what what just were, are you thinking at that point in the game? You know, I don't know if it was just, you know, naive time score at the time, but um, I really ha had a piece about the whole situation. Um, even when he was going to the line, when I missed that shot, um, we went and lined up. We had a play called cross. Uh, guards were going to cross. We we're going to throw it on the run to me, try to take a dribble, you know, get it up. And so I really had a piece about, about the whole situation. Then after that, Robbie, everything went so quick. Like yeah. they missed one, then they missed two. The ball gets tipped, goes out of bounds. We have no timeout. So Jamie and uh, I think it was Jamie and, uh, and and Bob or Bill start yelling, you know, pacer, which is an audible to the play that we had called because now there's less time and it's a dead ball, you know, out of bounds. So we get in that. And, and, and really from that time at half court until basically I was in the pile, everything was a blur. <laughs> um, it just happened so quickly. So, Coach, I want to ask you, because Cissé misses the first free throw and you call timeout, what was what was the huddle like, I guess? Were, were people calm? Bry I'm shocked that Bryce just said he was at peace because end of the game, it's like, you know, that, that's, that's winning well, time for sure. We had practiced game-ending situations, so I think they knew exactly what we wanted to do. And so we reviewed if he made it, if he missed it. Um, if we had time, we would set up and pace her. So we just went over the options and they were very attentive. And, you know, it's not over. It's not over. Right. And so when he goes out and misses that second one um, and then the ball goes out of bounds and there's timeout. What gave me great peace was they looked over uh, and yelled pacer and I just said yes. So my job was done. I mean, they knew what to do. You know, we had practiced Pacer. It, it was up to them to execute. So I really felt very comfortable. And then when Jamie faked, and then the Ole Miss jumps up as he comes down, then Jamie throws. That's very key to get it over that guy and not get it deflected. And then you see Bill Jenkins jump up between the two, six, seven, six, eight guys of Ole Miss, gets right between them and catches and does that little touch pass over, all of a sudden I got goosebumps. I'm like, this could, this could really go. <laughs> because in practice, Robbie, we would do it at five on O, oh, and sometimes we couldn't even get through to the shot. You know, if we got through to the shot, uh, Bryce may not, we may have missed it. So very few times did it work even five on O oh in practice. So what you saw was perfection that we didn't get all the time um, in, in practice. But the whole key 
to the play, Robbie, was that you knew that they were going to stop Bryce. And so when we lined up, Bryce was on, um, it would be toward me, the left side of the floor and, and right side as you look down the floor. And he faked back. And this is when Jamie like faked the pass to, to Bryce coming down the sideline toward Jamie. And the old Miss guy thinking he comes out and, and he gets that arm out there like he's going to steal the ball. And then, of course, Jamie fakes it, and then Bryce takes off. On one of the classic plays on ESPN Classic, they show the Ole Miss, and the Ole Miss guy, he's here, he's smiling, and then he sees Bryce running, and you can see his face just change like, oh, no. Yeah. And then, of course, that gave Bryce a couple steps, and then when um, Bill caught the ball and tipped it over, uh, then, then the next eerie moment was – I was right in line with the shot and it, and it looked like it was going to be short and honest to goodness this day, I think God just, or the prayers of that building just got it up and it just grazed the front of the rim and went in. So you had all of that going on in that split second. So, so just to be clear, if, if he had missed the free throw, it would have been crossed the play that that's what you guys were going to run out of the timeout. And if, and if it was a dead ball situation, it would be pacer. Perfect. Yes. Crosses because we're rebounding the basketball. Right, right. Try to cross to get Bryce open and let him take it as far as he could go and shoot. So Bryce, I know you said that it's a blur. You don't remember any of that? Like you have no <laughs> recollection of any of those things happening? I, I remember the I remember the play call and then I remember faking and going and and again I just remember it was like complete silence. Like 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 uh, I go up to shoot and I, I don't remember any noise. I just remember anything. Um, I just remember again, I thought it was gonna be short too. And, you know, thank God that it lifted over. If you go slow motion, it actually, like, skims the front rim and slit and slide yeah. in, uh, in slow-mo. But, um, yeah, no, total blur. And, and, and the crazy thing is on the court, if you look at that Ole Miss team, like, one is the athletic director at Ole Miss right now. You know, oh, yeah, I knew that. I knew he one, was. <laughs> yeah, one is the head coach in Florida right now. Um, I think one's head coach at Central Arkansas. I mean, they got a lot of guys that, that went on to, have done great and are doing great in, uh, in basketball. I always te tease uh, Mike White um, that if he'd been guarding me, I, I don't know if I'd have gotten it off because a freshman was on me and Mike was a junior. He sure. may have seen it coming. Got a little more discipline than to bite that. on yeah, that, uh, yeah. bite on the play fake there. So thankfully, Mike was on the bench for, uh, for that play. I'm sure they love seeing you in recruiting when you when you're going around and hey guys, how, how's it going? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they love seeing you. Before we continue that interview, I just have to let you guys know that it is that time of year again. We have waited two years for this moment, and it is finally here. March's biggest tournament is back. Gonzaga's getting ready to run the table. Slippers are being fit as we speak, and our partners over at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app are putting our listeners at the center of the action. How? If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week, and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. You download the app now. You use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on one of them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There is no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to the test and then to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe. It's secure. It's reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. I know this because I use them. So remember, the code is FIELD68. That's FIELD68 to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. So, so you dive on the floor. Do you remember that? Do you remember? I, I don't. I don't. I, just... saw it, I saw it on TV. So to, to date myself, you were dating yourself with the internet is we go yeah. back to the Holiday Inn because that's where they put us. And um, and we were so excited at ESPN because no Twitter, none of that then. Sure. We're so happy they're just showing highlights on ESPN of our game. And, and when it showed the final play, I had no idea kind of what I did. I just remember being on the ground and, uh, and getting everybody on top of me. Well, I have to say, I could tell you what I was holding, who I was standing next to. <laughs> I luckily got to see it live because I was in, I'm in third grade – and it was one of those deals where you took your, your third grade teacher taught you every subject except for one. So let's say it's math this, this uh, year. 
So when we do math, we would go down the hallway and go to a different classroom and a different teacher would teach us. And I'm trying to get this teacher to put the game on like the whole time. Like I, I asked at least three or four times. She'd like put it on and then turn it off. And I don't know why she was, I don't know if she was afraid of getting trouble or what, but we get done with math class and we're walking down the hallway and Cook's Corners Elementary School in Valpo is like a big L. And we had to walk down to like, I guess the corner of that L and there was a TV and our principal's watching the game. So I'm like, Mr. Turner, what's the score? <laughs> and he's like, well, we're down two with 2.5 seconds. So I like abandon the class with my boys and I, we go and we, we're watching with him. And you make the shot. I'm holding this gray and black pencil box. I'm standing next to the dude that lives down the street from you guys, Jonathan Zimmerman. And I literally took my pencil box and chucked it in the air. I was so hyped. Like you could not even imagine how excited I was that shot went in. It was, it was incredible. It was really cool. Uh, so. That's a great story. And I, I can visualize Cook's Corner and Zimmerman and all them. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a good time for sure. A, a good day in, in the life in Valparaiso. What, what was the locker room like? You know, were you guys like, I mean, was it just pandemonium or was it, I mean, the NCAA tournament's weird because you win and the coaches are already like, all right, who we play next? You know, but like, I guess for the players, what was it like? You know, for, I, I do the player perspective. We, we had, uh, we had six seniors on the team and, right. and you kind of walk through, you know, our three NCAA tournament appearances and, you know, the first one, again, not close. Second one, we thought we could have won. We were right there. So coming back, you know, we, we had accomplished, you know, a lot up to then, but we had never won a game in the tournament. And that was kind of the, the, the goal that all the seniors had. So I, I guess there was a lot of emotions. It was kind of like, you know, obviously extreme excitement. There was also some, from, from, uh, some fulfillment because we accomplished kind of one of the big things that we came back to want to do. And, and then there was also kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of just the relief, I think, that we did finally win a game. Sure. Um, not to make closure to it, but that was kind of the one thing that was unchecked on our boxes to advance in the NCAA tournament. So I think it really helped us go into the second round against Florida State because it took some pressure off us. Like we won our we won the game. Like 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 now let's just go out. We can just play totally free. Yep. And uh, I really think that that freedom really helped us in that second round game. Coach Drew, what about for you? Was there any celebration or was it like, all right, we got Florida State, they just upset TCU? Boy, you named it just right. Coaches worry about the next game. And yeah. so after the excitement in the locker room, when we get back, all, all the coaches, we're now looking at Florida State and uh, who, who is going to be our next opponent and what we can do and what adjustments that we needed to do. So we're right at work on that. And what is interesting because of, of the great shot – um, from the first victory, we kind of forget the second game, but Florida State, we won in overtime. Sure. And it was just as exciting a game. Uh, it just took us a little bit longer, five more minutes to win it. But it was an exciting game as well. And, and I guess the, the thing that really st stands out most is when we came back from Oklahoma City back into Valparaiso, mm -hmm. uh, we were met by a police escort. And they're saying, we're going to escort you in. And I'm thinking, what do we need in that? We know how to get there. All that, all that Valpo traffic is tough, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So we, we drive and we don't even get onto campus, as, or as we do drive onto campus, uh, forget the, the road there, but it, we looked up and, and you couldn't even drive. You couldn't even get a bicycle. The p place was just packed with people and students. And uh, as we drove around the corner to get there to the ark, there were people in the trees, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> cheering and and uh and welcoming the team back so that that was really a special special moment my mom took my brother because he wasn't in school yet so I, i'm in third grade she didn't and she, i guess she wasn't going to take me out of school to go back and meet the team but i'll probably <laughs> never forgive her for not taking because <laughs> i i would have been fully invested in doing that i remember the way also that cbs kind of portrayed valpo <laughs> was really interesting like they're showing like the some beater car that like is yeah. driving down the one road and like it was like come on like huh. there's thirty thousand people that live here <laughs> the, I, I, and, and robbie we've lived there like you know our whole life you know in and out yeah. but 
that they were showing some places too that I've never seen. Never seen the bingo hall? Where like, were. where is that even at? It's like, come <laughs> on. No, I'm totally with you. They made us look like we were kind of like, you know, more maybe country than Valparaiso actually yeah. is. We are a suburb of Chicago, basically. Exactly. We're 55 minutes from, from the, one of the biggest cities in the country. Coach, I want to ask you, how do you watch your son make a shot like that? And not like dive on top of the pile along. I mean, I know you have to be semi-professional and like go shake the other coach's hand, but like, I mean, I'm sure you wanted to. How, how do you not just go lose your mind? Uh, well, uh, I did find him and we had a big hug. And so yeah. that was that was very, very special. Bryce, how, how would you say that that shot changed your life? You, you know, from, from the from the outside, I mean, obviously people knew more of Valparaiso, of our team, um, you know, of, you know, myself from making the shot, just being, being played on TV so much. Uh, but, like, like personally, like nothing changed. I mean, it's a basketball right. game. I mean, that's what, that's what we do is we play basketball. Um, and so it didn't really change from that perspective. For me, um, like yourself, you grow up wanting, you know, March moments, you know, you want to make sure. the NCAA turn play in the NCAA tournament. And ever since I was young, you know, I'd sneak out of my, my, my bed to try to watch the, the NCAA tournament. My dad would let me, let me come down and watch some. And so it's always been, every time you go to the gym, you dream of making that shot. And so, you know, to be able to do it and do it in the NCAA tournament, I guess for me, it was more just a personal, you know, um, gratitude, you know, a lot of, again, fulfillment, happiness, just, all those works in the backyard, you know, five, four, three, two, one, throwing up desperation shots, you know, being able to have one, you know, that happened actually on TV and the NCAA yeah. tournament. Well, I can say I'm sure you guys practice Pacer a bunch, but my third grade AAU team started running it all the time after that. We practiced <laughs> it maybe just as much as you guys. Robbie, and at least once a year, I guess for probably the last, well, maybe 15, 17 years, I'll always get some high school coach, college coach, elementary yeah. coach. He'll send me a tape. Thank you for the pace of play. Nice. You it know, works. It still works, huh? I'm calling it the Valpo play. And yeah. so, so it's always nice, you know, that, that that shot touched a lot of lives as well. I can remember getting letters from Europe, from China, uh, to sure. Israel, to just, you know, complimenting, saw the shot uh, on TV and had – that shot touched even jobs. We had one of our law students go out to Denver and uh, on Monday he had an interview. And of course he watched the game. And on Monday, the ones who were interviewing him saw the Valpo shot as well. He got the job on the spot. The guy was a big basketball fan. <laughs> Valpo and, was hot. Uh, and he wrote me the nicest letter to thank Bryce for helping him get the job. <laughs> so that's awesome. So a lot of people saw it and were touched. How cool is it for both of you that, I mean, the NCAA tournament is such a big part of certainly all of the three of our lives because we work in, in this industry. But, I mean, to have one of those moments is so special, I feel like. Like, when you think of the NCAA tournament, Bryce, your shot is – that's one of the best shots ever made. I mean, how cool is that for you? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a huge blessing, Robbie. Um, you know, I think God, God blessed that ball again. I thought it was going to be short to go in. And hopefully, um, you know, I can use it as a platform to, you know, serve him, glorify him, and, uh, and, and just spread joy of the game of basketball. You know, I also think uh, the father-son dynamic um, oh. a lot of people, can, you know, relate to. Um, whether you coach your son in Little League or, or AAU, um, be able to share that bond together. And, and, and for me, you know, I, I saw my dad coach his whole life. I saw my brother Howard. He worked. And, you know, part of, part of kind of the family business is you want your family to be successful. And I guess my part at that time was be as good as I could as a player to try to help win as many games as we could. So, um, you know, it's definitely something I'll always take with me and um, I'm just extremely uh, grateful for it. I appreciate you guys coming on. I will say before we finish up with Scott, whenever I do a Baylor game, I tell him, I say, why didn't you recruit me? And he always <laughs> says, man, my dad wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> But thank, thank you guys for coming on here. It was awesome reliving what happened back in 98 and talking some Valpo hoops. And I, uh, I think the world of both you guys. So I appreciate you coming on here and, and being a part of the, the Goodman who's not here in Humble Pocket. <laughs> Our pleasure. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys. <laughs>